going to remove the wheel, use a 17 millimeter socket. Take these lug, lug studs out. And you go to take the last one out. You might want to hold the wheel so it doesn't fall. And then slide it off. Using some needle nose pliers, I'm just going to grab the pad sensor and slide it up. A little clip right there that goes on that. And just slide this out of the way. You can take this off the bleeder. There's a clip right here. Just use a pry bar. Just pry this clip off. You can also use some pliers. Take that off. There's a couple of caps covering where the slides are, where the bolts are. Just take those off. Use a screwdriver if you need to, or a pick. Take a seven millimeter Allen socket. Loosen up the bolts for the caliper. And I'll just take a pry bar, just pry, pry the caliper over a little bit so it's easier to remove. Make sure the bolts are out. And slide that off. You can take the brake pads off. Slide those out. And take a brake caliper hanger and slide it on the coil spring or wherever you can hang it from just so there's no tension on the brake hose. Now take these two bolts out, use a 16 millimeter socket. out and slide the bracket off. Take this screw out, use a six millimeter Allen socket. Slide that out. And take a hammer, just give the rotor a tap. And slide the rotor off. In the back, lift this panel up out of the way. We've got to lower the spare tire, so loosen this up. Then take this and carefully twist this, and this will lower down. It's going to be a little heavy. We can pull the spare tire out. Now through the base of the spare tire holder, I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket. Take these three bolts out. Just tip this down. I'll just twist it out of the way. I can just hang like that. Now I'm gonna take these bolts out for the bracket that holds the sway bar on. Use an E12 socket. And take these ones out on the other side as well. Remove the lower sway bar link nut. Use a 16 millimeter socket. And if the stud starts spinning, you wanna use a wrench. You can slide that off and out of the way. Take these axle bolts out. Use an eight millimeter Allen socket. And take those all out. There'll be a little bracket right here. You want to take those out as well. And once you pull those out, you just slide this up. Now before we take the axle nut off, I'm just going to use a punch and a hammer and just try to pry those over. It's just peened over a little bit. And 
and take the nut off. Now slide the axle out. Just like that. Now I'm going to remove the parking brake shoes. I need a 4.5 millimeter Allen. And just push in here and just twist. Release that spring. You're going to do the same on the other one. And there's a spring right here. You want to take that spring off. You can use some locking pliers or some needle nose pliers. And slide this off. You can leave the other spring attached and just slide the shoes over the hub. Now we're going to use a special tool, pull the hub out, get the right adapters. As I'm tightening the tool, the hub is coming out. it out like that. Take some snap ring pliers and you're going to take the snap ring off. Squeeze that and slide it out. And we're going to use the same tool and just use a different adapter so that it fits just about the same size as the bearing. And we'll pull the bearing out. all the way up, slides right up. Now I take the bearing, I'm going to slide it in with that magnet side going in. Then you're going to have to use another adapter. I'm going to press this in. With the adapter on the back side, just be careful of the ABS sensor. If it's in your way, if your adapter doesn't line up right, just take that ABS sensor out. It's just one bolt and it slides right out. It's not in our way, so we'll be okay. And now, as I tighten this up, it's just gonna pull the bearing into the hub. I mean, into the knuckle. Just make sure it's going on straight. Snug, loosen up the tool. And slide the tool out. With the hub, we're gonna have to take the old race off the hub because we're not gonna be able to press that on. So we can either cut it or you can try to get in there with some type of a press or some type of a pulling device. Uh, what we're going to do is heat it up, and as we spin this, it's just going to drop down. Put the snap ring in. Make sure it goes in all the way around. So we got that off. It's cooled down by now. Uh, it would have been a little bit better if we heated this up a little faster. If I used oxyacetylene, it probably would have came off easier. It would have just slid right off. But either way, we just used a hammer and hammered it off. If you get any gouges in the hub at all, um, you want to sand those gouges down. Um, little burrs, just a little bit. It's not going to 
harm the um, the integrity of the piece. It, if you want to, it might be a little easier for you to put these parking shoes back on right now. Get those lined up before you put the hub on. And take the spring with the pin. Get those started there. Same with the bottom one. And just get the spring in. Might need a pry bar. Pop it in. Just make it a little easier. I'll just put a little grease on the hub. Now we're going to use some adapters to slide the hub in place. We're going to need a smaller adapter so it just covers the inner race of the bearing. You don't want it pushing directly on the bearing part right there. As you tighten it up, it's just, you can see the hubs going in. It's exactly what you want. And you can remove the tool. Now slide the CV shaft in. Slide that in place. Over on the differential, get this lined up. Get the bolt holes lined up and get the bolt started. So let me turn this to the side. Makes it a little easier. And I'm gonna to torque these to 44 foot-pounds. You wanna replace this with a new nut. Get the axle nut on. I'm putting a pry bar in between two of the lug studs to prevent the hub from spinning. And tighten this down. Then you wanna to torque this nut to 320 foot-pounds. Do the best you can. Now just take a chiseler or punch and just peen over the edge of the, the nut. And put the sway bar link back into the sway bar. I'll just take an 18 millimeter wrench this time to keep the stud from spinning. Take the sway bar, get the bushings lined up, and get the bolts started. Now spin the spare tire holder around and slide the bracket back in place and get those three bolts started. And snug those down. Now put the spare tire back up. Take the strap that goes around it. Slide it through. Just like that. It up. And pull the spare tire up. And twist this lock. Take this piece and put it, screw it back in. Just snug it down. That's good. And put this cover back on. Just take a wire brush and you want to clean up the hub surface. If there's any rust on there or corrosion. I'll do a nice thin coat of anti-seize just on the hub surface. Now install the rotor on the car. If you have to adjust the parking brake, you can use the adjuster right there if you have to tighten or loosen it. Get that lined up. You want it just barely touching. Then put this screw in. Making sure this is flat. 
and snug it down. Now I'm just gonna clean the bracket up, use a wire brush. Put a thin coat of grease on the pad where the pads are gonna slide. Same on this side. Slide the bracket over the rotor. And put the bolts back in. Get those started. And torque these to 48 foot pounds. And take the brake hanger off the caliper. You want to use a caliper compressing tool. Nice and slow, compress the caliper. Take the brake pads, this one goes on the outside, the one with the bracket on it goes into the piston, just like that. Before we put this on, just take these slide pins out and just clean the pin up. Use some brake parts cleaner and a rag, wipe it down. Take a little brake caliper grease up the pin and do the same on the other one. Slide that in position. Now torque these to 22 foot-pounds. Put these covers on. And put the bracket on. Kind of get it in place and just push it on. You can use pliers if you need to. Now line the brake pad sensor up with the brake pads. Push it in and secure it around the bleeder screw. Put the wheel on. Get the lug nuts on. Now I'm gonna to torque these lug nuts to 110 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. I'll go around again, double check. 